Steroids themselves, synthetic that is, that are not bioidentical to the body, they're very dangerous. It's going to kill a lot of people, and they may say people. no steroids ever killed anyone. That's not true. And we are back with Dr. Nick Delgado, an anti-aging specialist. He is author of Be Fit and Pain-Free. Great to have you here today. It's great to be here, Greg. So, by the way, I should say, um, since we had Stephen J. Cannell in the first segment about the A-Team, you told me that you trained with Rampage Jackson? Yeah, um, he was at Tito Ortiz's gym, and uh, we ran uh, physically running down the street together a few times. Uh, but more importantly, he was in an altitude conditioner with me oh. nearly every day to help to recover and restore the blood cell counts. Uh, it's kind of a simulation of, of going up and down in an airplane 20,000 feet and then dropping 1,000 feet per second within a 20-minute period, wow. actually happening within seconds. It's just amazing what it does. Well. On that note, because I think this kind of leads into our next topic as well, the altitude therapy, um, I know we've had a running debate on this show about steroid usage, and I, I know right. you've seen the interviews that we did with Christian Boving where he admitted that he's done steroids, and he feels that it's using steroids is okay, it's the abuse of them is the problem, if I'm paraphrasing him correctly or something of his point. You're here to set us straight today as the, the doctor about steroids. Are sure. steroids good for you, bad for you, no harm? Use well, them, don't abuse them, that's okay? I, I'm a health educator and health scientist and I train with the world experts around the world, uh, all the way from UC San Diego professor, uh, Dr. Ron Rothenberg, uh, to Dr. Hertog in Europe, and to Dr. Morgenthaler from Harvard. And I can tell you this, that under no conditions is it appropriate, even in small dosages, to use synthetic steroids, untested, meaning they're not having laboratory tests to know what their levels are, they're not checking levels for PSA, they're not doing all the standard and appropriate things that a good qualified anti-aging doctor should do. Now, beyond that... So the, the guys shooting up in the gym or the weekend warriors or whatever who are just, they got it somewhere, somehow, from somebody and are just injecting whatever. There's a few very dangerous things about it. Number one, if you know what methyl testosterone is, it's an oral steroid that they take and swallow it and it goes through the liver and it can damage the liver and turn into a lot of harmful metabolites, namely estrogen byproducts. That's why they have all these surgeries to remove fatty tissue in their breast tissue. Not only that, when they use nandrolone, which is a, a drug that according to Dr. Chrysler has caused more cases of impotency than anything known. Even one injection can cause a year-long uh, bout with impotency. Furthermore, they're risking heart disease and high aggregations of platelets and high cholesterol level. Now that could be, I might qualify, due to their abnormal high meat diet that most athletes think they need to get their derivatives of protein. Uh, but if we remove that factor, steroids themselves, synthetic that is, that are not bioidentical to the body, not naturally found in the body at the levels that they're injecting, they're very dangerous. It's going to kill a lot of people and they may say people. no steroids ever killed anyone. That's not true. There's a rampant number of young men. I, I know a gentleman who's a medical doctor injecting steroids, and just a week before I told him, we need to check your levels, let's see what's going on. And doctors are smart enough to check other people, sometimes they don't check their own, and he was using synthetic steroids because he was training for the Ironman, a big bodybuilding contest. And I know for a fact he suffered um, a brain damage stroke a week later, wow. and we were searching for a way to get him in for hyperbaric oxygen over at UCLA, but they refused because they, they only use it for uh, burn victims, and he passed. He oh died. Very young man. A doctor. Yeah, and, and his levels, when I happened to have his blood levels because we were checking everyone at the event, and uh, he volunteered to have his blood done, and we got the results back, and he had abnormally high testosterone levels. It's not the testosterone that killed him, though. He had excessively thick blood blood and a lot of the bodybuilders have to donate blood regularly because their blood gets so thick from platelet aggregation and hematocratics that he, he dangerously in fact did cause a stroke. Well now the, the fact that this guy is a terrible example but the fact that he's a doctor is, in, is a great example in a sense because I'm wondering how people get these because I mean I hear they get them from doctors through prescription is that one way I mean can you find a doctor who will write a prescription for you or how easy or hard is it to get these? Uh, testosterone is a controlled substance as is growth hormone as are and should be things such as thyroid and so forth. So they should be regulated, but based on what each individual symptoms are, what physiologic uh, ideal levels are. So steroids can be uh, achieved. You can, uh, as I heard your previous speaker on the subject, you can drive over the border and go into any pharmacy and they will sell you these very dangerous synthetic uh, metabolites or that is uh, synthetic hormones. Well, to, to I, get, I guess for our European viewers, I'll say that we're here in California, you're saying across the border into Mexico, it's not very hard to get them. 
Right. I, I've been to Europe, but I haven't taken the time to walk into different pharmacies there. Uh, I know that even vitamin C is a prescription item in, in Europe. So, you know, if people I, are... I guess what I'm saying is, are, are doctors, you know, incorrectly prescribing them here in the U.S.? Is it too... Uh, you hear about painkiller medication people get and all this other stuff that they shouldn't, perhaps shouldn't be getting. Sure. Are, are they misprescribed? I'm sure, I'm sure there's some examples of it. Usually it's used for stunted growth or for people who have AIDS uh, or other uh, autoimmune diseases that they they need serious help. But you see, again, I want to qualify this. You can take pure bioidentical testosterone as a cream or gel, or you can use it uh, as a pellet inserted uh, into the buttocks area, and it'll last for three to four months. And it's pure bioidentical testosterone, which is naturally found in the body. And it releases at a very safe level and maintains a physiologic level close to that of a 20-year-old is you know, what, what you're trying to strive for if you're 70 or 80. Some of my clients are that old, and so, so you it feel makes there, a difference. there are legitimate uses Absolutely. for Absolutely. What, what age are we talking? You know, a 20-year-old could be deficient. That There is that probability. You know, most guys know when they're 18 or 20 and there's the alpha male in the group and he's an athlete and he's, he's in great shape, he has no sexual dysfunctions, then there's the guy that's, you know, always had a low testosterone level and it may be normal for him, but he may not like the symptoms of it. Uh, something could have happened at birth or just during the course of his life or eating junk food, all that estrogen from fatty foods pours in the digestive tract and is a thousand times more potent than testosterone. So it competes and they get obese, they lose their hair, they develop prostate problems as they age. And women, they're taking uh, synthetic estrogens. They're using it from horse urine and it's very harmful for them, very dangerous. Even the pill is dangerous. What age are we talking though in general? Granted, that apparently, I mean, the 20 year old probably isn't your typical case. Uh, 35, 40, 50 and up is okay. almost everyone's hormone levels uh, past the age of 30 start to decline very rapidly. And so what would you recommend then for someone of that age? Because that's it's an anti-aging Well, we, we have Dr. Goslin and other staff physicians that after we get back appropriate laboratory uh, levels, uh, we measure their blood levels, we measure 24 urine levels, because a blood test may show artificially a snapshot uh, since uh, testosterone cycles every 15 minutes. If they drew the blood at the time when it was at its lowest point, you might think the person's low, or if it's at its highest point, you may think it's normal. So uh, 24 hour urine measures the total load. And then once we get all these results back, our doctors evaluate any symptoms and any needs, and then uh, prescribes appropriate therapies that may include multiple hormones. And you should never give an anabolic like testosterone without knowing adrenal function. And so many people have colds and flus and bronchitis. You go to the gym and these big bodybuilders are hacking and sneezing and coughing because they've overstressed their adrenals and they can't possibly keep up with the level of steroids they're taking. You have to balance the body out. Think of hormones like an orchestra. Every instrument pay, plays perfectly and in unison, not out of sync. And when they're taking these massive dosages, they're setting themselves up for some very dangerous side effects. Well, I've also heard you talk or seen some interviews that you've done when we talked earlier on the phone about steroid alternatives, things like high altitude, training and that sort of thing or the hyperbaric oxygen chambers and that. So what are some other things besides, let's say? Exactly. To name a few, and, and by the way, there'll, there'll be people that'll look at me and look at other bodybuilders. I have a Latin background. And when you look at Latin bodybuilders, they're very sleek and slender. Their biceps, their, their chest, you know, that's just their physique. Uh, you, you look at Mike Menser, who tells you that uh, at the time of peak of his career, his biceps and his calves were huge and humongous. And sure, he took steroids, but his dad didn't. And his dad has just as big as biceps and forearms and, and calves as he did without lifting weights, without taking steroids. So how Genetics is major in bodybuilding. But w w when you look at someone like me and they say, oh, well, sure, he's using alternatives, but they don't work. Well, they work for me. I've perfected the, the level that I'm at. I I could compete with any bodybuilder out there and outlift him any day of the week. In fact, you've set what a world strength. I am the world's record? strongest strength endurance athlete of all time as we speak. I've lifted overhead, hammer curled, pressed in the Dragon Challenge, and then later in London, I went on to break the record after that. The prior record was 40,000 pounds lifted overhead with dumbbell presses, and I hammer curled and pressed uh, 50,564 pounds in one hour. 1,974 lifts in one hour. Yesterday, I just took a challenge from three, two pro athletes and a boxer, and I said, you guys total up your lifts, take the weight, 
uh, you select the, the, the dumbbell you want to use and I'll use, I'll spot you five pounds to top it off. And I did over 400 lifts and all three of them were exhausted after doing about 360 lifts. They, they couldn't keep up with me. But if they had wanted to keep going, I, I'd go over 1,000, 2,000 lifts. And uh, I'll challenge anyone out there to show up and go against a natural bodybuilder and fitness athlete at age 55. I don't care if you're 28. I just beat uh, a defensive lineman for a major NFL team in a, in a lifting contest. And he was shocked. 28 years old. Uh, he looked like a Greek Adonis. Abdominals, his abs, his, his arms were bigger than my legs. And he laughed when, he, when I said I'd beat him. And when I toasted him after 200 some lifts, he couldn't believe it. Now, sure, there's guys stronger than me in a single lift. But, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't train for that. I train for strength and endurance and longevity. Well, I'm sorry, we're almost out of time, but in our final minute here, um, anything you want to say to yeah. the young guys out there or yeah. any of the guys, the athletes? Train under this? extremely cool conditions. Keeping the body very cold during training will improve your performance by 600%. Not even a steroid will improve performance by 600%. How? Learn about altitude conditioning. It will improve your recovery. Learn about a high complex carbohydrate, low fat diet. It will make all the difference. Switch from uh, meat and animal proteins to vegetarian proteins. I've created a whole format to restore hormones, clear out bad estrogens, and build up the natural testosterone levels. You'll feel like a man again. Uh, finally, how cold when you said cold or cooler? How, how no, cold when I'm training, um, I take my shirt off, I go outdoors, but in, in a simulated gym situation, I have actual fans on my body, and I sometimes will barefoot. Uh, I wear barefoot shoes, but I'll, I'll put ice underneath to keep pulling heat off my body and I'll have people spraying me down so I keep cool because the overheating is very dangerous in the gym. I never thought of that, but that's a great idea. I'm going to give that a try. Well, thank you very much. Dr. Nick Delgado, anti-aging specialist. His book is Be Fit and Pain-Free. We'll be right back with Dr. Tracy Cordray.